Why, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I often kind of sit down and think about this podcast, whether whether or not it's it's you know moments before I recorded. But honestly, I think about it throughout because I listen to the episodes later on intentionally to kind of touch base and see strengths, weaknesses, and things to improve, things like that. Right? I think that's a, a vital component if you're looking to improve anything in life but i think about it from many different aspects as well from more so like what what is what is the end goal for the podcast and while i I have some personal goals for this podcast and i have some personal um, metrics that i'm trying to reach and and my why as we talked about in previous podcasts go go reference those my why for this podcast is very cemented so I know why I'm doing this podcast. I know what, what the reasoning for it, and there's a few of them. And, and one day we'll get to that, but we hit that topic just recently, so I don't feel like we need to touch it this uh, soon. Those whys I've laid out um, don't necessarily fit the broader range and, and audience that this might or will hit, right? It, ultimately, the podcast is, is exists out in the universe wherever however you define the internet, right? So it's going to be out there hopefully for a very long time, if not ever. Uh, And so with all that being said, I think one of the whys, which I'll let you guys in on now, is because I do have a hippie mentality of uh, the uh, the, uh, concept of the person that needs to kind of hear this stuff will eventually come across it, whether it's in my lifetime or not. And that's the beauty of the internet. And, and that's one of the whys. There's a few of the reasons why I've put so much time and energy into this. Uh, but that's one of the whys I'll, I'll allude to now. But, you know, I think about this podcast a lot because I know that this is not for everyone. And we talked about that on the previous podcast. I'm aware of that. I'm aware that this is not a podcast for everyone. This is a podcast that, unless I'm doing the interviews with people, this is a podcast that will likely turn off a lot of people. Because... The topics that I that I touch in this podcast are such that they can be sensitive, they can be intense, they can be um, difficult for people to hear because they do touch upon developmental things, things that you might struggle with, things that you definitely are doing or maybe not doing, things that you're um, great or not great at. Depending on the topic, those can be in good or bad, right? So... I'm aware of that. And I'm also aware that there's a lot of people that likely aren't super ready to have really deep, hard conversations with each other. Well, that's a joke right there. I just said, I just thought about that as I said it. It, It's, it's an incredibly difficult thing to do when you're having hard, difficult conversations with yourself. And some of those conversations are I've used the word sobering very often, but it's sometimes a slap in the face when you've come to an epiphany about yourself and now you have to go back and self-analyze and maybe apologize or maybe make amends for some of your choices. Those things are hard. And as we talked about in many podcasts, many people can easily live this life and avoid those type of growth moments. But I challenge you to not avoid those moments. Those moments are critical for so many things, for your quality of life, for your ability to break cycles that you're currently finding yourself in, for your ability to not perpetuate a cycle through generations. Those are incredibly critical for people to try to gather and master. Because I know, and you know, that there are definitely things that you will carry on from your parents or based on what you see around you. And we, in a weird way, are far more symbiotic as a species than you think we are. We are far more connected than we think we are. And that's not a hippy-dippy moment. That's a, a situation that you can easily bring based on the pandemic situation, right? If we weren't as symbiotic as we think we are, the pandemic would have never been an issue. Are we care? Do we care about what, what uh, illnesses that wolves or coyotes have? Do we care about that? Likely not, because we don't. We won't get infected by a lot of these illnesses that we never really even hear about. 
But when it comes to a thing that affects humans, we're very conscious of this because it can spread quickly. And the only reason it spreads quickly is because we all, we're all a giant conglomerate in a giant system that we're not really ever admitting or looking at. So all of that to say is that I think about this podcast a lot because I'm putting out there a lot of things that I've seen based on my time looking at life and people. I'm putting things out there that um, are very close to me and were hard and difficult choices and, and, and realizations for myself in an effort to in some way maybe spark an idea within you. This podcast, I'm not one of these self-help guys. First of all, I'm not a self-help guy. But I'm not one of these guys that thinks that you're going to hear something or read something and automatically your life has shifted. No. All of these things are sparks. They're ideas. Just like the printing press was for the past. These are all sparks ideas that can then translate to other things. But any sort of change comes from within. Any sort of change that you're looking for has to have you as a human actively choose to move forward and continue to perpetuate that change. If we can do it as something as simple as weight loss, you have to make the choice to lose weight and continue to make the proper choices to lose weight, whether that's exercise, diet, a combination of the two, whatever it is. Those are choices you have to make. If you're looking to be a person that has a better way of speaking or better vocabulary. Those are incredible choices that you have to make for yourself and find ways to do that, whether it's reading more, whether it's thinking through your your speech process more, whether it's getting more educated and, and, and working out your ideas. Those are all things you have to work out on yourself. And so these are only examples, but ultimately I'm aware of what this podcast is and I'm aware that not necessarily it's for everyone. Um, But I am at this moment, apart from my whys, which I'll try to remember to link that podcast below so you know what I'm talking about when I say why, apart from my whys, I'm very compelled at this moment in my life to put out this podcast. So hopefully when you come out of these, my goal is that you have something to think about and you ponder it, and you then think about how that applies to your life, and think about how that applies to you and what you think of the idea that I proposed. Because I don't necessarily think that your existence is my existence, because we all live different lives and have different upbringings and nature-nurture scenarios, right? But ultimately, I hope that you take the ideas that I bring out, and it gives you something to think about, and think about what those mean on a greater scale when it comes to you and your life, and what lessons can you pull out of something. That's where a lot of the beauty is in, in, in old folk tales or um, biblical stories or whatever you want to say they are. Ultimately, that's the beauty in those things, that where you could take those and think about what the real meaning behind the story is, what the real meaning behind the tortoise and the hare, what the real meaning is behind the... What was that story, the frog and the scorpion? What the real meaning behind some of these stories are and how that translates to you as a human and your existence here in this modern society. So that's my thoughts about this podcast at the moment. I'm going to try to work on a little bit more on getting interviews as, um, you know, those are always fun, but it's hard to do because lining people up and, you know, for the fun ones, they're not often in my own city or state, so it's hard to try to do them via Zoom because there is a, a weird delay, but there's always a goal there. So I'm going to work on that stuff and try to continue to give you guys continuous, consistent content. And for those of you that share and give me feedback, I appreciate that. On to today's episode. So those of you that know me personally or maybe follow me on social media know that I, 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 I mess around with house projects and I do a little bit of woodworking and 
Um, so I'm always doing projects and things around the house, right? Fun little things that I enjoy um, at times. Sometimes I really hate them. <laughs> But I do them because I, I, I it's a creative venue, um, a, a way to express myself, I suppose. I don't know. I won't get into that today. But one of the things that I I found myself the other day, one of the byproducts is of doing those things is that, you know, there's always little things that happen to your hands. It's a hand-heavy operation. Therefore, there's a lot of things that happen to your hands. So I always have little micro cuts and little gashes and, and, you know, whatever, you know, it, things happen. Luckily, I don't chop off any more fingers, knock on wood. Where's, where's some wood around here? Hold on, let me knock some wood. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Knocking on some wood. Anyways, so with all that being said, I, I found myself with a little, like, a little cut on my, on my thumb. So if we are, like, if you were doing the little thumbs up sign, um, it's basically on the fingerprint area on the little tip of, of your of your thumb. So because of that, just doing things is so much of a handful and a pain in the butt when you're doing things um, with with a cut on your on your on your hand, right? It's different if it feels on the top of your hand because you can avoid that. There's not a lot of contact that happens there. But when you're doing things with with your 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 hand, your palm, your your finger area, your fingertip area, your your fingerprint area, whatever you want to call it, when you're doing these things and you have especially on your dominant hand, it was on my right hand. I had a cut right there. And so when I'm doing anything that's that's getting jabbed Right, it's getting hit. There's a little, little painful little thing, right? There, it prolongs the healing process because it's constantly getting attention. So the skin's moving. So any sort of calluses or not calluses, but any sort of healing takes longer. And in, in my normal day to day, it took a, a while to heal. I mean, it's healed now, but it took a good two weeks because it was on the palm of your hand and it takes longer. I mean, one thing I, I came to realize during that session is when you're injured or when you have something wrong with your body, you really start feeling and realizing how you use that body. For those that work out, you'll, you'll know that you know, sometimes, especially when you first start working out, you'll be sore. And sometimes, especially in the beginning, you'll be crazy sore. And when that happens, you end up being you end up like finding out that you use these muscles, these random little muscles in, in different times that you weren't aware of, right? Like you'll have a, a little muscle on your back that you never realized you used when you were just walking. And you only use, you only realize that because you're sore. And so when you're sore, you start, that, that muscle still needs to be used whether or not you're, 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 you're actually working out or just operating and walking around. So, you start realizing with that little muscle, and you're like, wow, I use that muscle way more than I thought, right? But same thing kind of happens when you have a cut in your hand. When you have a cut in your hand, you end up touching things, you, you unbutton buttons, you rebutton buttons, you, every time you go to the bathroom, maybe you, you hold a pen a certain way, maybe you, you fill up through a book, and it, it's just kind of aggravating that cut. And that's what I had for a long time in, in my in my healing process with this cut. I had this constant little little nagging thing where there was taking off a watch. I have a, a wristband or bracelet, whatever you want to call it, that I wear often. And it's, it's um, I think I've shown it on social media, it's basically like a wolf head biting this, this thing, right? Well, the only way to get that on is it's, it's a screw type, so it screws on. And the, the area that you're gripping to screw it is, is a very sharp, jagged piece. And so every day when I'm putting this thing on, you know, I'm jabbing at that part of my thumb. So you get the point by now. Like this is something that took a long time to heal. This is something that was kind of bugging me. And, and I was very aware of it because it was kind of annoying. It was a, just a long-term annoyance. Well... One thing I've realized is that although I definitely use that part of my finger, there's a weird thing inside of a human brain that happens. When you're not supposed to do something, 
your brain wants to do it more. And the easiest example and analogy I can give you for this is as a little kid. As a little kid, we all know that if you tell a little kid, don't hit that button, that's the thing they want to do the most. And we know that. And we know that specifically because we were little kids at once and your parents told you not to do something and you just wanted to do it. That was the thing that you were most compelled to do. And because of that, I realized that of my finger. After a while, I started thinking to myself, like, I don't think I use this part of my finger for these specific tasks, but the little part of my brain kept using that finger for those little tasks. Now, one can argue that's, that's a, a human thing, that's a, a thing inside of us, that's some sort of evolutionary thing, I don't know. I, 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 one could argue it. I mean, I would be willing to listen to that argument. But it's very funny that that's the thing because there came a point where I started using that finger with the cut for far more things than I normally would. And with all that being said, it's very fascinating and how to me that translates to a normal human life. We'll often do things that we're not supposed to do, even though you know you're not supposed to do them. We often will do things to ourselves for no reason at all because we feel like, because subconsciously we just do things. And it really brought to the forefront for me the possibility that you might be doing certain habits or certain routines that are likely not good or edifying for you because subconsciously you just want to do them. That realization was interesting to me, not because I feel like I have a tremendous amount of similar things, I suppose. I mean, everybody has that to a certain degree. I can't say that without self-correcting, right? Uh, there is a certain amount of things that we do that are probably not good, but I feel like I have a lot less of those. Um, I try to keep vices and negative stuff out of my purview. But with all that being said, I think we all have this thing to a certain degree, this, this, this thumb thing that we kind of continue to do it on a regular basis. But with all that being said, I think we all need to kind of self-analyze and ask ourselves the question as to whether or not there are things in our lives that we're doing for the wrong reasons. And maybe not even for the wrong reasons, maybe just something as simple as we're on autopilot, right? We're not self-analyzing. And there's a lot of things that one could put into this box, this box that I'm describing, one of which would be your bad relationships, right? We easily can fall into a situation where you continue to maintain bad relationships, bad relationships that aren't edifying, relationships that are actually holding you back and, and bringing you down at times. Those are, are easily examples to point out. One could be just choices, choices of continuing to find yourself in the same situations, whether it's money spending, bad food choices, whatever. Those could all be that same nagging cut in your finger that you're just not addressing. And so I'm going to keep this one short because I think the intro was long. I'll leave it as this. Are there, or if not are there, how about what are the things in your life that are that nagging little thumb that you might not be noticing, that you might actually be drawing yourself to instead of actually correcting. If we're talking about the analogy of my thumb, there are situations in which I use my thumb in a way that it poked at that finger cut when I usually don't use my thumb in that way. Right, so what are the things in your life, whether positive or maybe negative, that you feel are those things for you? The things that you probably are gravitating towards that you don't necessarily need, or the things that you're doing that you quite frankly shouldn't be doing for any sort of logical sake, or maybe relationships that you have in your life that aren't edifying and aren't good for you. 
I mean, what are those things for you? Everybody has them to a certain degree. And if yours are to a high degree, those are the, the ones you should definitely address sooner rather than later. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Ultimately, this is a nice little, a nice little gift I was given and then a nice little motivator for the podcast. I hope this gives you a little food for thought. We'll see you, talk to you guys next time. Thank you.